we are two minutes and 30 seconds away. I think one of the things that we will end up having happen is that the launch countdown will be about 30 seconds delayed from what is actually happening on this feed. Yeah, I was just looking at our countdown clock versus SpaceX's. Uh, it's about 10-ish, maybe 12 seconds apart. Uh, do have word from SpaceX that prop load is complete as we are now less than two minutes away from the planned liftoff of Starship. Again, there could be a hold at T minus 40 seconds, so we'll be keeping a close eye out for that. Uh, just want to briefly mention that as we were been talking a little bit earlier about, you know, what we're looking for with this flight and what's important uh, from this flight profile, uh, someone very much in the know is uh, Lars Blackmore. He's the senior principal Mars landing engineer for SpaceX. He just uh, posted to X saying that um, they're, if they can survive hypersonic entry, uh, we know from our suborbital hops that we can take the ship the rest of the way to landing. So it sounds like he, like us, are are looking for that re-entry and the, the proof and the pudding of the heat shield for Starship and those tiles. Now will they withstand the re-entry? So we are currently about 40 seconds away from the planned liftoff of Starship. Again, we may hit a hold because we're a little bit ahead of the SpaceX timeline. So we're listening to the audio from SpaceX. Got the call that it grow for launch. So if our countdown clock is right, we should be about four seconds away from liftoff. We have engine ignition. Yes, indeed, Raptors igniting. And we have liftoff, liftoff of Starship on its third integrated flight test. Ship 28, booster 10, soaring high above Southern Texas on the third flight test of a Starship rocket. Got some great tracking views from our team here on the ground. As all 33 Raptor engines are burning now about a minute into flight, coming up on a minute here. And we're getting some onboard camera views here. You can see the hypersonic grid fin Starship continues its climb through the clouds, coming up on a wow. minute and a half into flight. These views are, the onboard views are amazing. Yeah, some great onboard camera views. Just outstanding. Coming up, the next milestone that we're going to be hit is going to be Booster Miko, which in this case stands for Most Engines Cutoff, that's coming up at T plus two minutes, 42 seconds. That'll be followed by the all important hot staging two seconds after that. And then the booster boost back burn startup at T plus two minutes and 55 seconds. Still getting some great tracking views as Starship moves among the clouds. about 20 seconds away from Booster Miko. A couple seconds later, we'll see hot staging. Oh, 
they cut away from on board right before hot staging. And it looks like we've got good hot staging and separation. Oh, wow. And you can see the booster moving away from Starship. That's incredible. It was about this point last time around that we saw the breakup of the super heavy booster. So we'll see if the booster is able to make its way back down toward the Gulf, but you can still see it in the view here from onboard ship 28. So Thomas and Steven, we're gonna be excited to hear from you if you can hear uh, booster 10 making its way back down. I have a feeling it's way too loud for them in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. We got all 10 engines, or sorry, all 13 engines um, still active on the booster. So it looks like boost back is going really well. Yep. And we just saw another reduction in Raptor engines. And now I've got some uh -oh. dual onboard camera views here, which is just spectacular. Coming up on three if minutes. They cut engines for boost back or if they just lost it. Yeah, I'm listening to see if they make a mention of that. We're now a little over four minutes into flight. That was uh, around the time that the booster boost back burn shutdown was about, you know, planned to occur. Given the fact that we're still getting a speedometer and an altitude monitor, I think booster is still intact. Yeah. Wow. Coming up the next milestone here will be uh, when the booster becomes transonic or slows below the speed of sound. And we'll see the booster landing burn start up at T plus six minutes and 46 seconds. But Zach, I mean, this is what we were hoping to see with the ship upper stage. There's a big test here and just some spectacular onboard views that we have not seen from Starship yet. Yeah, this is amazing. I mean, they're basically doing the whole thing on board. That's basically what everybody wanted from the last flight. I, I think a lot of this has to do with um, the the upgraded Starlink antenna locations on the ship. And uh, I think that's possibly what's giving them better connection this time. There's a, we, we've been thinking for a while that there's a chance that they just didn't have signal at all from the ship um, during flight two. But oh, OK, we're getting um, some rotation from the booster now. It looks like it should be getting some grid fin action here soon. Yeah, and our cameras oh, man, on the ground here are this time. This is going to be amazing. We'll see if our cameras can capture it as it happens. They're they're scanning the skies and hopefully we'll be able to catch it from the ground as well as from the onboard cameras. We're now passing six minutes into flight. We're about 30 seconds away oh, from wow. the booster being transonic. Grid fins. Yeah, I get some grid fin actuation there. Nice to see some maneuvering. That booster is making its way back down for what appears to be set up for a, a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Another big achievement. The 13 center engines are going to ignite and really slam on the brakes. You'll see the speedometer drop much more rapidly. All right, showtime. Whoa. Looks like they have a few engines that have ignited. Whoa. And there that it is. is.